This is part two. Let's talk about acting, y'all. As I left off, um, Guardians of the Earth was going to be the thing that solidified me, really, it was. Um, my bro, Bruce Johnson, had lost his job for doing things I'm becoming, and he was the special effects guy. My bro, Courtney Monroe, my boy, Rodney, my boy, J. Diz, my boy, CLS, uh, the mysterious news character whose name I can't remember, and my boy, Prince Octavius Brown. All of these men gave up their time to work for me for free to make this hero series. I had two guys, uh, a white guy named Dustin, who was supposed to be the true hero of the thing, white savior complex, I know, and um, my bro Charles, who lives up the street. Both of them, at some point in time, decided that they much ra much would rather get high than um, be in film. I had one rule and one rule. Because I can support you and not like what you do. You can smoke all the fucking weed you want. I don't care. It's your body. It's your life. I don't pass judgment. As long as you're willing to um, accept the consequences that come with it. So both of them live in the same block. And Dustin was like a little protege to me. I taught him martial arts. The initial role was written for my nephew, but my nephew, instead of just saying no, he started treating me like dog shit. He's dead now, and God rest his soul. All he had to do was say no. I can take no. I can much rather take no. And, um, you know, Gary yeah, rolled with Dustin. Dustin showed up for one shot, <laughs> and we filmed most of his shit in one day, and then he wouldn't come back. So he couldn't be the hero that I wrote him to be. His loss. Charles showed up for one day. <laughs> Two days, technically. And then he copped out. And um, he couldn't be the hero that he was supposed to be. Now, granted, the initial movie was called The Path of Ascension. Or The Path of Ascension. Depending on how you want to look at it. It's on Kung Fu Havoc number one. It's three parts. Because at the time we made the original movie, YouTube had like 15 to 30 minute limit on what you could put on YouTube. And um, again, it's uncomfortable having number one. It has special effects in it. They pick on my hair a little bit. And I am Wind of the House of Wind. And each one of them are elements. So when I met Courtney, I asked him if he wanted to be in this movie. He's like, hell yeah. And I was like, you want to play the good guy or the bad guy? He's like, I'll play the bad guy. I was like, okay. I didn't really want him to play the bad guy, but the shit worked out. So, hey. And then there was a uh, Prince who was a uh, friend, Prince Octavius. Don't, don't think it was the real Prince, like the singer. But um, he wanted to be in there. And I said, okay, well, we need a guy to play the fifth element, which is steel, because we had fire, ice, and dirt. If you got ice, you have water, so you don't need and I was air, so he would be steel. Now, the plan was we would bring in weapons so that we wouldn't have to use that many special effects, which also worked out. We had to use special effects to form the weapons, but other than that, we rarely had to use special effects. I have commas, and everybody else has swords, all right? Except for steel, he had a javelin spear thing. Anyway, we all had weapons. And we had, it, it could be put together in a, an hour and 45 minute movie, but we made it into seven episodes because of the webisodes and um, special effects need to be put in it. And um, I did what I could do with my old Mac. It's up there somewhere or in this drawer somewhere. And I did everything I could do. However, you know, I put everything together. It was golden. I gave it to Bruce. Bruce went to Alabama. He got attacked. My shit's out there missing somewhere. But that was going to be the thing that solidified my career because people were going to watch it because, you know, YouTube, everybody watches YouTube. You're going to see this martial art dude go through this journey and everything and see some special effects. Well, I never got the special effects because we will never see it again. But it's out there in Alabama somewhere. And um, whoever has that, I've made like 90 videos on this channel alone actually giving my address like an idiot out of good faith that they would send this shit back. Alright? I don't want any criminal charges. 
I don't even need the old laptop back. I just want the fucking terabyte back so that I could get the shit that we had done. So that was supposed to solidify me. Then everybody would know who I am because I couldn't get a job at Millennium Studios here in Virginia to save my life. So I figured, well, I've been doing it independently. I might as well keep going. Independent films, sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. It's just a chance you take when you make an acting career happen, you know. And I, I have a policy, you know. As long as I'm not on the cutting room floor, you don't have to pay me much. If you feed me and get me to the location, I'm more than willing to work for fucking free. As long as you put me up, you know, feed me, film me. We can make a film in three days. You honestly can. Especially if you have no budget. And for me and these guys, we had no budget. And I told them, look, I can feed y'all, but I can't pay you. And it's like, what? I said, look, I get paid at the end, at the beginning, but the middle and the end of the month, because I had a full-time job at the time. So I said, look, I can't pay you, but I can feed you. And it's like, what? I said, yeah, we can order food before we go. I'll pay for it, because we're going to have meetings before we go film, or after we film. We're going to have meetings. We're going to get cooler full of sandwiches and sodas or something that we need because this is how I had to do this shit because I don't have any money you know and being able to feed people sometimes you can get a lot done when you can feed people versus when you can't you know and then I had to work around your job schedules and these people gave up their job schedules and worked around their free time to work for me for absolutely fucking nothing and I am honored that they would do that and that's why if they ever need me for anything, I don't tell them. They, I don't tell them. I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. And they're like, well, we can't pay you. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Look at what you've done for me. What kind of asshole would I be? It's like, well, we're willing to pay. No, 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 no. Y'all worked for me, and I didn't make it yet. So if Jay Dead says you want to do a, a a music video and stuff, we're gonna stuff you in a trunk. Okay, done. If CLS says we're going to do a music video and we're going to stuff you in a trunk. You're going to be fighting over a, over a go hard or go home shirt. Jay Diz knows that you get me there, you come get me, we film, you take me home. It, that's it. I don't give a fuck about the money because I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because it makes me happy. So, yeah, I'll take that beating and I'll get stuffed in the trunk because it's going to look cool. Because we're going to work that shit out so that it looks cool. And then, same thing with CLS. You know, if they like, we're going to beat you up and put you in the trunk. Okay, let's go. It's like, no, we can't pay you. We family. You ain't got to pay me, bro. Because you went out your way to do shit for me when I couldn't pay you and all I could do is feed you. So, hey, let's rock. You know, I film because it makes me happy. I don't film because I'm trying to get rich. I would, If that comes with it, great. But I film because it makes me happy and it's what I want to do for a living but you got to start somewhere and I've been starting for the last 20 some odd fucking years with no break you know I wanted to be a wrestler but they said I was too short and no one would give me a shot I wanted to be an MMA person but they said I didn't weigh enough and then I go to the army I get up to 140 pounds I get a hip replacement so I can't do shit now but now they have my size when I got into the army they started having guys 110, 115, 120 pounds, which is what I was at 5'3". Could have made a killing, man, but nobody would give me a shot. And that's why I haven't given up on this thing yet, because no one would give me a shot. You know, Rock, if you see this, I know you hire a lot of actors that um, have Samoan descent. I'm not Samoan, I'm part Native, but you hired half your cast in Black Adam. So, hey brother, I'm available. And you do have a place in Virginia, so I'm definitely available. If you want to film in Virginia, just come get me. I'm ready. I'll die on film. I'm good with that. Anyway, moving on. I have to push forward. And I've come too far to quit. I done gave up 20 years of my life to get to where I am right now. But 20 years of being James Williams Jr. has not worked i.e. the picture that I posted. James Williams Jr. is dead. 
Long live Echo Fang Grey Wolf. This video is explaining that because if you're going to be an actor, you're going to give up a lot. A lot. Giving up my name, that's small potatoes. The only reason why, again, I haven't legally changed it, I said in the first video, I'm a veteran of the Army United States National Guard. My dog tags over there, my cat card never leaves my pocket. My veteran cards never leave my pocket. My mirror never leaves my pocket until just now. But, no. It's my cat card. That's my veteran's card. Face is a little scuffed up. I need to ask them the next time I um, talk to them if I can um, get a new one. I license, college ID, should never lose my pocket. So I have many forms of ID, just none of them have Echo Fang Grey Wolf on it. And I'm, if I can get my native card, that's exactly what it's going to say. So I'm working on it because I'm on my reconnecting journey. Now, acting is not a business for the weak. You have to be strong mentally because you are going to hear no, 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 and no, 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 and no. Until you don't. Until you finally hear a yes or until you quit. I'm not quitting because I've invested way too much time into this shit. Way too much time. I got a, um, I got a compliment or I got a, um, a comment on uh, my video and a young man said you've been out here since 2010 and you haven't blown up yet sadly I have not but I thanked him and I thank him again and you know like I said this business will take everything from you and hopefully the fruits of my labors will pay in dividends you know and I'm busting my ass y'all it might not seem like it because yeah I rearranged the room it's a different look, but, you know, I'm busting my ass. And it's kind of, life gets in the way. And, you know, there's just never been any opportunities for me. And there's not, like, a whole lot that I can do. I'm relying on 9-9, but I'm still pushing forward on my own just in case. And I'm paying 9-9, like $40 a month out of my military check of $300 a month. It goes to 9-9. It goes to Straight Talk. It goes to my dental insurance. It goes to my gas tank and any other bill I have, that's where my money goes. I have nothing. You know, I don't have a real job. I would love for my acting career to just skyrocket. And I know when it happens, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And I'm staying positive on that. And I'm feeling that 2023 is either going to be the year I make it or the year I die. We're praying that it's the year that I make it. So, you know, I'm not giving up on shit. Anything can happen between now and cosplay time. So, I do know that once Page Publishing sells my book, I'm going to have money. Yeah, I'm going to have money. American Kodo Reach is going to sell. Love 13 is a lot better, and I probably should have went with that first. But I'm stupid, and I didn't. So, if I can find $2,000, like the second I get $2,000, I will write them a cashier's check and say, Yo, publish Love 13 right now. Love 13 is an acronym. It stands for Legion of Vengeful Enchantress. It's a whole lot of shit going on. It has something to do with YouTube. It's art, intimidating life. I'm actually in it. It's an autobiographical fantasy. It touches on native deities, Greek deities, and Roman deities, and all kinds of other gods and stuff, and even Shangri-La. Anyway, not going to give you any more here. But um, I got like nine notebooks out there full of this stuff. You know, all handwritten. And unfortunately, my dad passed away. So I dedicated it to my two fathers and my ex fiance But, you know, I dedicated a chapter in American Code of Reach to my current crush, who does not know I exist, the flawlessly beautiful and dangerously sexy Zeta Zang. I'm in love with that girl, and I wish that she could meet me, get to know me, and feel the same way. It's probably not going to happen right now, but the future is not set in stone. And you never know. Miracles can happen. I do believe in miracles. You might not believe in miracles, but I believe in miracles. 
Now back on this acting thing. There are many doors into this business. Many, many doors. For me, most of the doors have been closed due to my height and my race, not my capability. Now, before my hip replacement, I was damn dangerous. Had I got discovered for like one champion or some MMA people would have gave me a job in my 20s instead of shunning me because of my size and telling me I need to get my weight up, I wouldn't be here right now. I would be where I want to be, where I need to be. So this is the thing about those many doors. All of them are always open. And sometimes you have to quote Bruce Lee and run around the back and kick in the side door, which is what I've been doing. The side door is made out of titanium because I can't get my little stubby legs to get through the damn thing. But I'm not done yet. I'm still fighting. As long as there's breath in my body, I will never give up. And I was like that before I joined the Army. The Army just enhanced that willpower to never give up. Part of our warrior ethos. I will always place the mission first. I will never quit. I will never leave a fallen comrade. And I'm missing one. But it's over there. That also doesn't really leave my pocket. But there's just no room in my little lanyard wallet thing. Because I don't have a real wallet. I carry cash in my pocket. I don't carry it in my wallet just in case somebody says, give me your wallet. No problem. You know, you can have it. There's no money in it, but, I mean, it is what it is. The thing is, though, I would implore you that if you want to get in this movie, this movie business, that you pursue it with every bit of your soul. I would also implore you that you do everything you can to go for everything. You hear on the radio there's a casting call coming to your city, your town, your neighborhood. You get your ass there. But before you go, understand this and understand this now. There is a very slim chance of you getting picked. You have a better chance of not getting picked than picked. But there's a reason for that. It's not you. Understand that it's not you. There was a list that the higher ups have, and I have never been on that list. All right. So yeah, let's say that tomorrow WWE Incorporated decides they want to buy all of my stories and say we're gonna make all your movies. Done. As long as I get to star in at least two of them. Done. But with them, they'll probably be like, well, we're gonna put this wrestler, this wrestler, and this wrestler in certain shit. Okay, as long as I have creative control. Okay, I don't need to be the director, but I need to be on the set every day. Then make sure that what I have on paper is as close to possible as what you have on film. Because I don't have a problem. I don't have to be the star. That's the one thing I've always said. I don't have to be the star. Now, here's the kicker on that. All of my stories were written for mixed people. So, if you are biologically black, native, or white or Asian, then those are the characters that need to play those starring roles. As for the rest of the people, I'll be happy just being the old bum in the corner. You know, because I'll be like Stephen King. As long as I can get a cameo in there, we're good to go. As much as I would rather be the star, I'll be happy with the cameo. It's the same thing like if tomorrow Progressive came and said, you want to work with us and be like Jamie and Flo? Oh yeah, as long as I have the freedom to be able to work everywhere else you know because I, I want to i would like to be a free agent if you would so it's like let's say if i had the choice between progressive with jamie and Flo, or allstate with mayhem i have allstate insurance <laughs> i think i'm gonna go with mayhem no offense to jamie and Flo, but i have allstate insurance i use allstate insurance so i would rather have allstate insurance i would rather be in an allstate commercial but let's say they don't offer me that. Jamie and Flo do. I'm going with Jamie and Flo. Or the gecko. Because I want to be an actor that bad that, you know, I'm still going to use my Allstate insurance. But I will work for Progressive. It's no problem. But I'm not giving up my Allstate insurance. I would do a straight talk commercial. Because I have straight talk. <coughs> Even though straight talk now is partnered with Verizon. But they've always been partnered with Verizon. That's the only way Verizon would be getting my money because Verizon screwed me out of $1,000 when they took over Alltel. Yeah, $1,000 in less than a month because 
every time you changed your plan, they charged you $300. They didn't have that shit in the fine print. But if they had it in the fine print, I didn't see that shit. So, that was that. But, you know, I want to make commercials. I don't have a problem making a commercial for ginger ale. I take this shit straight to the head, you know, because it helps my stomach. Watch this. Or, my other personal favorite product. Gatorade is thirsty for that deep down body thirst. I use Imperial Butter when I make my grilled cheese sandwiches. Now that there is some acting because I haven't had a grilled cheese in like 10 years or so. And there's a psychosomatic reason why I cannot eat grilled cheese. It's called my ex fiance. I used to make her grilled cheeses all the time. And when we broke up, it affected me so badly that every time I eat a grilled cheese, it doesn't stay down. So now I can no longer eat tomato soup and grilled cheese because it makes me throw up. Because I think of how she destroyed my soul. Okay? It is what it is. You know? Can I be one for Hasbro toys? You damn right. Because I still have all my G.I. Joes. All of them. Broken and fixed. Can I do something for this fanny pack? Or these specific brand of um, headphones? Or these headphones? Oh yeah. Because I use them. And I wouldn't just be selling them a load of bullshit. You know. Uh, liquid death water. I will get an Oscar for that. My friends love it. I don't. No, not gonna lie about it. But I can sell it. And I will sell it great. Bang. I had bang. I would love to say that I love bang. The thing with bang, though. Bang is sugary as fuck. <laughs> and I love bang. I love bang. It tasted great. It's just that the level of sugar... Needs to come down. The, the bang that I had was fucking awesome. It was fucking awesome. But the level of sugar was off the chain. And I was like, what the fuck? Because it was like my first bang. And, um, you know, like the first time I tried Monster. Sugar high. And I got bang. OD. And I was like, whoa. But the flavor was great. And compared to... Liquid Death, I'll take Bang. But you know, to be honest, as an actor, I'll sell that shit. I will drink that shit and you will never know that I can't stand it. Except for I like Bang. You know, I like a lot of products. I'm just poor. <laughs> you know, but um, Bang cost me $3.25 at school in the vending machine. It's a lot of goddamn money. So if I cut a deal with Bang, I say, hey, look, um, you want me to sell Bang? I have a deal we need to make. You can pay me less because you should charge less. No. Because college kids, vending machines are ridiculous. If you're not a college kid, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I paid $3.25 for a can of soda. An yeah, energy drink. And it was worth it. But it was expensive as hell. What if that's my last $3 for the week? And I really need that bang. I really need that bang. So if I was working for bang, the first thing I would do is go into the office of the spokesman and say, Hey, look, man. Your drink is great. But you got to reduce that price. Like, if you have it in the store for three twenty-five, dollars and it's a six-pack, great. But in a vending machine, 325 is a little high. And as much as I love your product, I would rather you pay me less and make the drink cheaper for college kids because I've been there where the last $3 in my pocket, I need something to drink, but I need something to eat. I need something to drink, I need something to eat. I'm probably going to go with what I need to eat versus what I need to drink. Just because of the fact that 
three twenty five can get me something to eat and something cheaper to drink versus just a drink. No disrespect to Bang, but it is an expensive drink in the machine. I haven't seen it in stores, so I'm pretty sure it's probably cheaper in the stores. But college kids don't often go to stores because they often don't have time. All right? So, yeah. As an actor, I would want the people that I'm working for to understand the poor person's dilemma. Because I've been poor, you know. And um, as a poor college student who's going to graduate before I'm 50, yes. That, you know, it's not... Um, a lot of options for a lot of us kids that are poor, you know, and need to um, kind of dumb down the price a little bit. College books are expensive, man. Most of my college books were all all over eighty dollars, all of them, which is why I'm keeping them some bitches. My law book over there, my law book in my backpack. Oh, I'm gonna stack all my law books in that shit. I'm not giving back not one of them damn things. I've earned those books. And those grades. So, you know, y'all can reduce the prices just a little bit. And that's the thing about being everybody's man. And let me tell you something. Another reason why I'm like this, and I need to say this, I know he'll never see it. DDP. Diamond Dallas Page. One of my idols, yo. I love that man. I follow him on Instagram. He has no idea who the fuck I am. But I follow him on Instagram. I love you, Diamond Dallas Page, because you made me want to be a wrestler and an actor as well. Because you came in as every day's every man. And I can relate more to you than I can relate to any other wrestler outside of Rey Mysterio for being short. But I love Diamond Dallas Page. Not as much as I'm in love with Zeta Zhang, but I love Diamond Dallas Page. And I owe a lot to wanting to fight because Diamond Dallas Page was a fighting motherfucking wrestler, yo. And I thank you, brother. I thank you so much. Now, as a man myself who's never been given a shot at what I want to do, that's why I fight so hard to be on this channel. That's why I fight so hard to make sure that I thank everybody on this channel, my whole 225 of y'all, because acting is not an easy business to get into. It's not. For, for some people, it's all about how they look. For other people, you got to have that talent. And if you don't have that talent, you need to at least have enough talent to make the star look good. And I'm okay with that. Also, shout out to my brother Larry Lamb. Because he's a martial artist. His kid's breaking into the business. Larry, if you want to give me a job of getting my ass kicked, I'll take it. But yeah, shout out to Larry Lamb, man. Larry Lamb's a badass, and if you guys don't know him, he was on WMAC Masters. Go watch it. You know? And the thing is, I try to pay homage to my heroes and my idols, yo. And Larry probably doesn't know who I am. Also, shout out to um, Mike Chat. You know, I'm a little older than him, but younger than Larry. We're on the same age as Larry. But um, those cats, both WMAC Masters, I miss Mike Chat on Facebook. I miss everything about that show. I wish he would come back. I don't know what's going on, but COVID rent everything for him. So if you guys find my chat, give him a follow, give him some love. Tell him Echo Fan Grey Wolf sent you. He doesn't know me by that name. He only knows me as James. But, you know, I would love to have been a Power Ranger when he was the Blue Ranger for um, Lightspeed Rescue. But now y'all know who he is. Anyway, I would love for Hasbro to give me a job as a Power Ranger. I don't have to be on the show permanently. I could just be like one of those old offset flashbacks to a ranger. It's like, yeah, this old ranger was way back in the Zordon day. I could do that. You know, and I'm still young and healthy enough that I can still do enough kung fu to get me past y'all. seen my videos. Anyway, moving on. As an actor, you have to learn shit on the fly. Improving is also great. I mostly did improving with the stuff that I do, although there is a script. <laughs> Sometimes the shit that you write on paper doesn't translate out of the actor. The actor doesn't feel it. He's like, well, what if I say this versus that? And that often works. There'll be a part three because nobody's knocking. They're just busting.